station closest to Yosefo, it's about three and a half kilometers away. Got to walk about 45 minutes for a uh, hitchhike. So, let's start. And this is the road that leads to Yosefo from the nearest train station. They have a nice bike path here. Two degrees, light breeze, really lovely. It smells like lumber, and I guess that explains why. Um, that's really nice smelling too. And we passed by some really beautiful forests on the train ride. So yeah, looking forward to seeing what kind of nature is here. This is the eastern entrance to Yosefov. The town is one road going east to west, and here we are. That's noting the beginning of the border of the town. This is the Catholic cemetery on the eastern side of the city, the northeastern. The Jewish cemetery is on the southwestern side of the city. Uh, here we have what looks like a bus stop. Um, I think there's another bus stop I saw on the map. It's in the middle of town that will take you to. Ulgurai, but now I kind of want to see where this is going to go to because I might need to go there later. Police station. Musaria Policia Yosefovia. I think we're maybe getting closer to the town center. It's really hard to tell. Uh, lots of stuff is closed. I mean, it's Monday morning at 10 a.m. I walk by an abandoned butcher shop. supply store, a flower shop, and an ice cream parlor. Uh, and that's the main plaza there. You can see the water fountain. I'll head there now. I have been following the town of Yosefov online for quite a few years now. Um, and I noticed that they had received uh, some money from the European Union to do some improvements in the city. And I guess this sign is now explaining that they have this uh, new public plaza with this fountain feature thanks to funds from the European Union. Poland is experiencing an incredible period of growth right now after uh, being in the European Union now for about 14 years, now we're going on 15 years. So this is the result of all of that now. Um, it's a very different country than when Grandpa visited in 1999. I can tell you that from watching his videos. Off the side of the town square is some um, Yosef of street art. On the left side there you can see um, what is the official emblem of the city. I believe it was bestowed upon the city when it was founded in the 1700s from what I read on the website. Um, this is on the west side of the town square. You can see the fountain there. On the south side of the town square you have some shops. There's a restaurant and a supermarket. And then you have the uh, like Office of Culture for the city. And some Girl Scouts approaching. They probably want to know what I'm doing. Okay, this is pretty cool. This is the Urgent Mieski v. Yosefovia. That is the city hall of Yosefov, right here on the north side of the main plaza. I've been uh, emailing them uh, for information about our family's records for a few months now. So I'm um, kind of nervous to go in. I don't really know what it's going to be like and because I don't really speak Polish. Uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, this deserves a selfie video, which I don't really like to do. So the last video I made, I was talking about how I was so nervous uh, going into the civil records office in the city hall because I don't speak Polish. I can't describe accurately what it was like when I walked in there, what really happened. I kind of did a little cute wave, like a, like a hi. I knock on the door, it's literally a door. It says civil records office and it's closed. So I'm like anxiety automatically. And I see other people kind of just like knock on the door and walk in. So I figured I'll just follow them. And I walk in and I said in some very broken Polish, like, yeah, yes, Jonathan Graf, Amerikanski. I'm Jonathan Graf, the American. And I had my cell phone ready with the emails correspondence that we had sent. And right away they knew who I was. And they pulled, 
It's Alessandra and Vladislav. They work in the office. Vladislav's older, Alessandra's younger. And Magda works in the city hall, but not in the civil records office, but she's the English speaker. She's the only English speaker in Yosef up, she just told me. And so they like start calling for Magda to come out. And then they run to the bookshelves, which are in the back of the office, and they just start pulling out all of the Jewish civil records books because the civil records books were separated by religion back then. Um, I'm sure for all sorts of reasons. And they start, they're all indexed, so right? So you can like look up by alphabetically like what the name is. And they're like, graf, 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 graf. Like they knew exactly who I was and they couldn't remember Saba's name. So they're like, itzik, itzik. And I didn't understand what they were saying, but they were just trying to remember Saba Yosef's name. So I'm like, oh, it's Yosef I'm looking for. But you know, I'm really here for anything. I didn't, I didn't come here expecting to find anything because in the email correspondence we had, they wrote to me specifically that in Saba's birth year, 1921, they, they couldn't find anything. So I came in there to say hi. And so, oh, so I said into them in broken Polish, like, you know, chesem, movie, hello, I just want to say hi. Um, but they're combing through these books. They have piles and piles of books and they're opening up all of them. And there's uh, two of them talking to each other, looking at all the different indexes and putting little, um, uh, post-it notes on little pages of names and they start reading out names to me. They're like, Resha, Resha Graf. I'm like, uh, that, that was my great grandmother. They're like, is that so, so they're like, okay, okay, we're onto something basically. And they keep opening, they keep opening. And finally they find a book that has Yosef Graf, Yocheved Graf, Chana Graf, and Eti Graf, all with the parents of Eliezer Graf and um, Resha Lichtfeld. They registered, uh, 10 years after they were born. Oh, this is Magda. There we go. That's Magda. That's Magda. <laughs> they registered ten, uh, something like 10 years after they were born, you know, because you have to pay to register. And then they actually wrote the reasons why they didn't, it took them so long to register. Um, so it's all in Polish. I got copies. We're going to get a translator. We're going to get that whole thing translated. Um, this is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. I'm so glad to share this with whoever is going to watch this. Uh, this is a very special moment in my life. So, thank you. This is the bus stop that will take you to Bilgarai. I will be there later. This is some sort of banking thing or money exchange place called Kantor. And they do not have an ATM, which I need right now because I just spent my last 20 zloty getting copies of my grandpa and my great aunt's birth certificates, which we thought we didn't have, but we do. Not lost to those Nazi motherfuckers. That in the corner is the synagogue. And I'm gonna go there in a few minutes. It's a library now. Um, and then if you continue further down the road, it's the Jewish cemetery where I will go and say Kaddish. Uh, in a few minutes after I visit the library. But first, I need to get some Zlotis so that um, when I get on the bus to Bilgurai, I uh, don't have to make sad, frowny face. Okay, found the Bankamat. This is the Yosef of the synagogue, which is historically significant for a few reasons. Um, when the 1939 Nazi invasion of Poland took place, they burnt down the entire town, including the synagogue here. Um, in the early 2000s, I believe, the town of Yusefov, Yusefov um, invested money. Uh, the shell of the building had uh, been uh, existed, and they um, refurbished the building and restored it to some viable state and converted it into a library. They still call it the synagogue um, as a way to remember what once was. So this is the inside of the old synagogue, which is uh, an art gallery in addition to uh, a library, and then they have a section here dedicated to some Jewish history. There's a book uh, that a guy wrote who I emailed actually, he's Israeli. I opened the book. Um, some artwork here as well. Yeah, and I just talked to these lovely people, and I told them who I am and where I'm from, and they talked about the Isaac Bashevis Singer Festival, and um, there was a music festival here celebrating Klezmer and Isaac Bishop the singer and the connections to the Jewish community and I said thank you to them for maintaining the structure of the synagogue and 
taking care of it and turning it into a, a beautiful library. And yeah, they were very happy and surprised that I knew anything about Poland at all. They said, we thought nobody cares about us and nobody cares about Poland except Polish people. And then I gave them my cute little, you know, you know, this little thing. Me too, I care. Uh, so, yeah, that was a nice moment. This is the road to the Jewish cemetery. I believe it's pronounced Chirchut. I could be wrong. Uh, I'll have to look it up later. Looks kind of ominous. But then again, a lot of things in Poland kind of have this look, you know, kind of like abandoned farm, lots of green. So I should be there maybe within 10 minutes of walking. It looks like it's kind of far out in the field. And I'll take some more video. We'll see what it looks like. I'm kind of apprehensive, you know. I've had a lot of big moments today already. So it looks like the Foundation for Jewish Heritage in Poland built a new fence in 2016 uh, to protect and preserve the cemetery which I did not know about. I did not find that in any of my research. There's no links uh, on any of the Lublin Jewish or Yosefov Shtetl uh, websites. So I'm, I'm happy to see it. I think it's a, a good thing. I'm just a little surprised. And it's nice to know that there's work being done to preserve some of our sacred history. I am in the graveyard uh, for Jewish loved ones at this is stupid. I'm in the graveyard uh, for Jewish people in Yosefov. Uh, it's quite large. The tombstones are in all different states of disarray and decay. You can see that the grounds are not maintained. Some of the tombstones seem to have been visited and perhaps partially restored or maybe it's actually just um, been very lucky. This particular one is extremely clear to read, still has paint on it. You can make out every word and the name of the guy. Uh, the one next to it, you see his name is Zev Yaakov, so the guy. Um, this one next to it also very well maintained as compared to some of these over here which are not totally impossible to read but would require some instruments. Um, this one is probably mostly illegible. You know, if you get close, you can see, you can make out letters, you know? So like with some cleaning and some study, you, these could probably be restored. Um, of course, you see there are many broken uh, tombstones as well. Um, it's unclear which of these are rocks and which of these are broken tombstones. It's part of the tragedy of what happened here. Uh, I believe Yusefov was one of the first places that the evil Nazis attacked. So um, when they desecrated the cemetery, maybe they hadn't gotten good at it yet. Because uh, there's quite a few standing uh, grave markers here, which is very much unlike what um, was experienced in the north of the country. Um, in Shekhanov and Moava and Pashashnish, uh, there is no uh, marking of uh, Jewish graves. It is just one memorial and broken pieces of gravestones. There's nothing like this that I have seen yet in Poland. So this is pretty significant. There is an incredible amount of beauty in the sadness of this scene. The graves go pretty far back in the distance there. The natural growth is quite beautiful. Some of the purple flowers, uh, maybe they are small lilacs, I'm not sure. They smell very nice as you walk through. There are little butterflies flying everywhere. Might be hard to pick up with the camera. I'm inspired to follow up on this experience in uh, the cemetery, uh, my ancestral cemetery. I was not able to uh, find any remnants of uh, my lineage here. It's very hard to read the tombstones. I had a hard time figuring out where the last names were, to be honest, and I even wonder if some of them don't have last names. So um, I think this deserves a significant restoration investment. 
I think uh, some of the natural growth could be maintained. It is quite beautiful and it would make a formidable garden and contemplation meditation space. I think the gravestones deserve to be cleaned up and I believe the deceased deserve to be uh, identified via their gravestones and we should have a database and map of the existent gravestones and who lies beneath. I think that would pay nice um, respect and homage to those that uh, lived in Yosef of before us. And we'll understand that we won't get everything right and we won't document everything. It seems like there are quite a few missing gravestones in the middle section here. Also, um, we know from Judaism in the United States that uh, a large gravestone kind of also indicates wealth at times. Uh, gravestones are not free, so um, people who had less money probably would just have a small gravestone in the ground, um, and you might not be able to see it with all this growth, so there could be quite a few uh, gravestones that are simply hidden by nature, and I believe that um, an investment could cl clean this up, and uh, I think there are resources out there to maintain something like this on an ongoing basis, and it would be a gift to the um, existence community of Yosefov, and it would be a tribute to those who have been lost, and I'd be proud to be a part of that. So uh, let's use this video as uh, some inspiration to start this. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Great Market Square of Zamoch. Zamoch is a designed city from the 16th century named after the president, I believe, of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and owner of the land of the Zamoyski Ordenaki, which just means a nobleman's title, a specific type of landowner from the Enlightenment period. Zamosh is named after the Ordenat Jan Zamoyski. He hired architects from around Europe to build a typical Italian Renaissance piazza in the middle of Poland in order to represent the multiculturalism that he was hoping to bring to the towns that he was allowed to establish by the Polish king at the time. Of the towns he established, he enabled people from all over the world and different ethnic backgrounds and religious backgrounds to live in those towns. That included Jewish people in a time where Jewish people could not live simply anywhere they chose. Ordenat Jan Zamoyski was one of the few noblemen of the time period that welcomed Jews to become merchants in his towns. And one of the towns that he founded, um, one of the pieces of land he was granted, rather, uh, a town was founded, I believe, by his grandson or great-grandson, whose name is Tomas Josef Zamoyski. And the Josef middle name became the town Josefov that I was just in. That is the Josefov that the graphs are from, all of them. Uh, from Lublin, from eastern Poland, southeastern Poland, all of the graphs are from Yosef of there. And that is because Ordinat Jan Zamoyski allowed Jewish people to live there. So this town is uh, built in his name and it represents so much here. It represents the multiculturalism of Enlightenment Europe, specifically Poland during a time where there uh, was not always integration and multiculturalism. And in today's Poland, we do not have such integration and multiculturalism. So this is a very big deal. Uh, the fact that this place exists, what it represents, and uh, the Zamoyski Ordenaki. Sometimes Yosefov is called Yosefov Ordenaki because uh, they want to differentiate from other towns that are called Yosefov, which really just means, you know, of Joseph. So it's the Joseph's town of the Zamoyski Ordenaki. That's how important it is to differentiate. People know it's from this very important 
and powerful nobleman, Jan Zamoyski.